Hello, everyone. Um, let me share the, the screen. All right, so uh, thank you very much for inviting me to be part of this uh, symposium. And this will be a very short presentation uh, as my role is more like a discussant uh, in this uh, particular symposium. And I'm gonna be talking about the future of uh, Q-based interventions for addiction treatment, and specifically how we are trying to tackle this issue uh, from the uh, ISM Cognitive Rehabilitation Delphi project. Uh, so um, I am, uh, together with Hamid Ekhtiari, I am the co-chair of the Neuroscience Interest Group at ISM, and uh, this Delphi study uh, on the views of experts about what is the future of cognitive rehabilitation in the context of addiction is one of the flagship uh, projects uh, of the neuroscience interest group. Uh, so the goal of the presentation is to tell you a little bit more about uh, the motivation and the, a little bit of an update about that project. So these are my disclosures, essentially no conflict of interest and my funding comes from government, uh, specifically the Australian Research Council, uh, the National Health and Medical Research Council, and the Medical Research Future Fund. And um, just to give you a little bit of background and history, uh, so we formed the Neuroscience Interest Group uh, in the ISAM conference in 2018 in uh, Busan in South Korea. And uh, during that conference, we had a series of symposiums, uh, four of them in which um, uh, experts in different areas of neuroscience, including uh, neuropsych assessment, rehabilitation, neuroimaging, we got together to try to discuss how we can better uh, translate uh, the massive uh, knowledge that we have around the neuroscience uh, of addiction into more pragmatic assessment um, and intervention uh, for uh, people with substance use and behavioral addictive disorders. So uh, one of the uh, initial outcomes of that um, uh, group that we formed was this roadmap paper that we published in 2019, uh, in which we kind of like crystallized our vision about what type of things need to happen if we want to accelerate uh, the translation of neuroscience findings into uh, clinical settings and uh, into the benefit of um, uh, patients with substance use disorders. And um, this is the paradigm of discovery that, that we put forward uh, in that uh, roadmap uh, in which we essentially propose that we should be uh, maximizing the synergies between uh, the science of cognitive assessment and neural mapping and the science of cognitive interventions and neuromodulation so that we can use novel cognitive assessment and imaging techniques to identify uh, the mechanistic targets uh, that are critical uh, for addiction, pathophysiology and psychopathology. And then we can develop cognitive interventions and neuromodulation interventions that can uh, uh, address and tackle those mechanisms in a very specific way. And then we can do pragmatic assessments of whether uh, those um, mechanisms, specific interventions are able to change the course of addiction recovery in terms of improving the outcomes uh, of addiction treatment. Um, so one of the areas um, in this paradigm of discovery, as you can see here, uh, is cognitive interventions. Um, and what we mean by cognitive interventions uh, are both cognitive training and cognitive rehabilitation interventions. So it's the idea that uh, since we know that there are a number of neurocognitive processes that are impacted by addiction, uh, and that includes alterations in the reward and incentive salient system, uh, in the emotion regulation system, and also in the executive control and decision-making systems, uh, we should be able to use uh, information about deficits in those mechanisms to develop targeted interventions. And um, 
to accelerate translation in that space, uh, one of the ideas that uh, we generated is uh, this Delphi uh, study in which we plan to survey um, a sample of international experts in addiction related cognitive training and cognitive remediation to try to ascertain like what are the key targets that we should be tackling uh, with these type of interventions and also what are the key approaches or modes of intervention that we should be pursuing uh, also what are the active ingredients or what are the mechanisms of change that those interventions promote and also what are the ideal forms of delivery uh, for those interventions. And uh, in terms of uh, targets, um, and this is uh, a figure that is extracted from um, a, a paper published by my colleague, Renaud Weirs, uh, essentially you can do a broad distinction uh, on whether the target is Q related or is non-Q related. Uh, I think it was pointing in the opposite directions, but uh, here you have when there is no Q involved, uh, and that means that you're not using any drug-related stimuli or any addiction-related stimuli to um, uh, deliver the training or the rehabilitation. And in this case, what you have is a general ability training. So the, the target is the mechanism in itself, like for example, working memory training or inhibition training or self-regulation training. And on the other hand, you have another approach, which is the one that uh, is discussed in this symposium, uh, that is uh, using addiction-related cues to try to uh, retrain the motivational value or the uh, attentional value, value of those stimuli. And uh, in that, you have a, a number of cognitive bias modification approaches that could either target uh, attentional biases or approach biases, uh, or also uh, inhibitory process, but specifically related to the, to the cues. So uh, in other words, can we uh, strengthen the ability uh, of people with substance use disorders to inhibit um, drug-related cues or the power of the magnetism of drug-related cues? So one of the things that we have done in the Delphi survey is ask experts uh, which of these targets they think is critical uh, for cognitive training and rehabilitation uh, in the context of addiction. And another area that we are interested in is uh, what is the approach that seems to be more promising? And, uh, and here the field is kind of uh, split into different school or, or approaches. One of them is what we call cognitive training, which is essentially based on repetitive and progressive practice. Uh, so it's normally computerized and, and you work in front of uh, stimuli and you try to engage with those stimuli in a certain way to try to improve your capability uh, or, for example, improving your ability to uh, resist uh, drug-related cues. But we have a, a slightly different approach, which is what we call uh, cognitive remediation, which is a little bit more similar to psychotherapy. So it is uh, often implemented in a group setting and uh, it is more about having discussions and practice and, uh, and a little bit of uh, uh, teaching of novel strategies to achieve uh, successful outcomes in a different way to uh, the way that it has been practiced before. So rather than practicing an ability, it teaches you a different way of um, uh, operating that ability. And, uh, and that is what we know as cognitive rehabilitation or cognitive remediation. Uh, and one of the things we want to know is uh, whether experts in addiction favor uh, some of these approaches or specific examples of these different approaches. And then we also want to know the opinion of the experts on what are the active ingredients of uh, these cognitive uh, training and remediation interventions. Obviously, we're proposing something different to traditional talking therapy. So we're proposing something similar to working uh, in the way that you would work in CBT, changing perceptions or beliefs. In this case, what we want to change are the actual mechanisms that underpin the cognitive processes that go over in addiction. Um, but 
in order to understand uh, the potential of interventions, we need to understand what is the key thing that they do that um, has potential to change those abnormal mechanisms. Uh, is it the practice? So it's repeating over and over again a certain exercise that is highly targeted to um, improve some of the mechanisms uh, that are abnormal in addiction? Or is the mental challenge and the ability to stimulate the brain in a different way to uh, help them uh, achieve a particular goal? Uh, or is the ability to learn novel strategies or novel way to perform old routines? Uh, or is the feedback that we provide uh, and the way that we provide it in the way that is applied, for example, in contingency management interventions. So we want to understand a little bit more about what is the current consensus on the active ingredients of cognitive training and remediation interventions. And then we also want to know in which way we should be delivering these different interventions. Um, we can do it in very traditional ways, like for example, journeys or paper and pencil work related activities. Um, and we have developed some of them in the context of cognitive remediation. Um, they have to be highly engaging, highly visual, but they can be quite traditional in the way that people interact with them. So it could be in a, uh, in a notebook that they have with them and they're able to go to it at any time of the day just to, to rehearse or to uh, practice with it. Or it could be in a, a leveraging the use of technology, like for example, through mobile apps or um, virtual reality or augmented reality. So we've also been playing with those type of interventions, trying to immerse people in particular environments to help them stimulate some of these cognitive oh, abilities. So uh, at the moment, like we are in the initial phase of the Delphi study. Uh, so Delphi studies are uh, iterative in nature. So that means that um, uh, we will have several rounds and through those rounds, we want to uh, reach consensus, but also stimulate and learn from disagreement. Uh, so at the moment uh, we have um, collected information from the first round and, uh, and based on the responses on this round, uh, we will get a number of uh, items that are already well consolidated and we will leave out of the second round but there will be some other aspects that um, either uh, seem to generate a certain level of disagreement uh, or we seem to have missed in the initial round. I'm going to bring them back in the, in the second round to try to learn a little bit more about it. So we initially sent 85 invitations and that was based on consultations with a steering committee uh, and also on a systematic review of published studies on cognitive training and remediation uh, that was actually facilitated by uh, Hamid's group. Uh, so thank you very much to everyone involved in that. And um, of those 85 invitations, like we've been able to secure uh, 54 participants from all over the world. Uh, and uh, we have a good uh, breakup in terms of uh, gender distribution and also in terms of the uh, schools of thought that uh, participants are coming from. So we have about 50% uh, that are coming from uh, the uh, cognitive bias modification or Q related training uh, school and around 50% that are coming much more from the general resource training uh, uh, school. And, uh, and that means that we have the Delphi process in motion. So uh, we are starting to analyze the data and uh, we will soon know a little bit more about uh, what are the key uh, targets, approaches, uh, modes of delivery and active ingredients that underpin uh, these uh, cognitive remediation interventions. So stay tuned. Uh, as, you, as you can see here, we are trying to engage and collaborate across the world. So feel free to reach out if you're interested in that type, this type of studies. And thank you very much to everyone involved. Thank you very much to ISAM for their support and, um, and to all the funders and collaborators. Uh, that's it from me. Thank you very much.